Hi, welcome to Tech Dicted. I'm Doreen Chomueno and today we are looking at shift registers. I previously used shift registers in a tutorial where we were dealing with the seven segments display and uh, they are commonly used when you want to increase the number of pins in your project. So in that project specifically, I needed 16 digital pins. Arduino, only, Arduino Uno only has 13 and I did not feel like it was a valid reason for me to expand to the mega instead. So I decided to add a shift register instead of using a mega. So in that case, I used this shift register. Okay, this one, that's a shift register. And so a register generally is a collection of flip-flops and a flip-flop is used to store single bits of digital data. Okay, so whenever you say, for example, this, is an 8-bit shift register and therefore that means that it has eight flip-flops okay because each flip-flop stores one bit of data and so if we say an 8-bit flip an 8-bit register then we mean it has eight flip-flops and in our case or in most sh registers we use uh, shift registers we use the flip-flop okay so Whenever you want to increase the capacity, you increase the number of flip-flops in that register. The reason as to why this is called a shift register and not any other naming is because it's able to shift data. As you will see, we will be shifting data from one end to another. Okay, so by the ability of shifting data from one end to another, then that's actually the term shift. Okay, that's why it's called a shift register. It's able to move data from one place to another bit by bit okay so we can shift from the beginning okay when it's zero 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 to zero 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 one okay assuming those zero are seven then a one then six then a one then a zero so you're shifting this data forward okay from either left to right or right to left depending on the type of shift registers and, and also the universal shift register is able to shift both ways so there are different types of registers and then again there are different types of shift registers in different sh registers shift registers we have different modes of operation for example you have a serial in serial out you have serial in parallel out serial uh, parallel in serial out parallel in and parallel out in this specific shift register i don't know if you can tell which mode of operation it is so we have eight outputs okay the red wires they're the outputs and we only have one input which is this data data in this is the second one is the input so we have one input and eight outputs so maybe in the comments you can tell me which uh, mode of operation it's using so for example in our case we're using serial in because data is being transmitted f with one line and then parallel out that's why we have eight lines leaving our circuit yeah so different shift registers again have different modes of operation and we will be looking at the uh, this shift register which uses serial in uh, serial in parallel out mode of operation Add three push buttons on one side of the shift register and on the other side add eight LEDs. Connect all the short legs of the LEDs and ground them and add a 1000 ohm resistor to each LED's long leg. Each push button connect one side to ground through a 10k resistor 
this will act as a pull down resistor Now connect all the output pins QA to QH of the shift register to the LEDs through the 1K resistor. You can also view this on the breadboard circuit diagram I have left for you in the description box. Then connect each of the push buttons to the shift register and the other leg to 9 volt rail of the breadboard. Now add a battery to the circuit and test it. At this point, mine failed. After some moments of trying, I realized that I had connected the wires to the push buttons on the wrong side. That's the wires coming from the shift register to the push button on the wrong side. And the last red wire needed to be connected to the 9 volt rail and not ground. I also decided to add LEDs to the push button so that I could know whether the pressed button was working and also so that you could tell which button had been pressed. The buttons were connected through a 220 ohm resistor. Click the data pin or the data push button. While clicking the data push button, click the clock button and release it. And then release the data push button and click latch. So this is the process you use when you want to add a one. And a one will mean an LED is high. Okay. Now when you want to add a zero or you want to push a zero, then it's click the clock pin without clicking the data pin and then click latch.